Welcome to Holistic Accountant Podcast, where we aim to showcase how adopting a holistic approach in accounting and tax maximizes value for clients. Beyond traditional tasks like preparing financial statements and tax returns, a holistic accountant focuses on offering advice that maximizes personal wealth on an after-tax basis. If you enjoy this episode, please consider leaving a rating and sharing it with those who might also benefit. And to ensure you stay updated, subscribe to our weekly email. The link is in the show notes. Okay, today, Men and I would like to discuss something really upbeat that should brighten your day, you know, how to prepare your business for an economic slowdown, or dare I even say it, a recession. This is not to suggest that one might be coming away, although I do think, you know, consumer spending and consumer sentiment is, I mean, it is relatively low at the moment, same with business sentiment. And it's quite possible, you know, depending on whatever industry you're in, you know, that the next couple of years probably won't be as buoyant as the last last couple of years. And under the guise of always, you know, plan for the worst, hope for the best. I think it's really a great juncture to sit down and think about what happens if business does slow down? How does that impact not only my business, but also my personal situation? And we've got to remind ourselves we haven't had a recession for a very long period of time. In fact, the last recession was early 90s, 90 to 92, where unemployment was north of 10% and interest rates were you know, approaching almost 20%. Of course, that's never going to happen in terms of interest rate settings anymore, that just the level of indebtedness, notwithstanding personal indebtedness, but even government indebtedness just probably doesn't ever allow that to happen again. But the point is that things can change very quickly. In 89, 88, the economy was going gangbusters. And two years later, you know, we're in the doldrums and, you know, the future's not looking so bright. So we shouldn't let ourselves fall into this sense that, you know, a recession is never going to happen. It hasn't happened for more than three decades. But of course, you know, something could be around the corner. So what some of the questions mean are that we should reflect reflect on to really assess whether our business is sensitive to a potential economic slowdown. So you need to ask yourself, are you in an industry that is basically relying on discretionary spend or are you in an industry that's basically essential for everyday supplies? So, you know, discretionary spend industries could be things of leisure. So think of, you know, your cars or your, your boats, your jet skis, your caravans, items of leisure where, you know, if the economy is doing well, business is doing well, then people tend to splurge on these types of things. Interest rates are low. So it doesn't really cost them to have these types of lifestyle assets. Whereas if you're in an industry that's, you know, essential, such as, you know, you're providing groceries, whether you're an IGA, your food works or, a, you know, a service station, although that's somewhat arguable these days with electric vehicles. But, you know, are you in an industry that, you know, provides essential services, then you're less susceptible to these recession risks or, you know, market slowdown. And I think how your business is structured, Mina, is important too. So, you know, if you are in a discretionary environment, then it's quite possible that you know, your customers disappear. And then to re-engage with those customers can be challenging and brands realise this and they try and keep that engagement. Whereas if you're in a business like ours, you know, something like providing tax advice and preparing compliance obligations, those sorts of things, for a lot of people, they've got to do them, which means that in a slowdown, you might lose some clients as they go and find potentially cheaper options or try and do it all themselves. But you won't lose as many. So there's going to be some downside, but maybe not as much. So you've got to ask yourself then in the event that you experience a significant downturn, and again, depending on your business model and the type of customers you have, that might look different for every business. What are you going to do about it? How are you going to sort of write it out? And I guess there's sort of two schools of thought here in terms of how you might approach it. The first one might be to downsize your business. So, you know, so to reduce your business setup to accommodate the lower level of volume. So if you've got multiple retail sites, for example, maybe you've got a compromise there if you can, particularly if one lease is coming towards an end, you can say, well, I'll just go month to month because if I get a slowdown, I'll let that go. Or staffing, for example, you might say, well, if we don't have that level of demand, I don't need as many staff and I'm going to have to let a couple go. The alternate approach is to try and ride it out and play that long game. And of course, you've got to be in the financial position to be able to do that. But the idea would be to just maintain that relationship with your customer database and not really change the theme of your business. So if your business is one that isn't marketed based on price, you know, you don't have a lot of sales or promotions or these sorts of things, you don't want to automatically then start 
producing those sorts of or running those sorts of promotions just in order to increase your volume because you're probably going to destroy your brand a little bit. In that situation, what you might want to say is, okay, it's fine. Well, it's not fine, but we acknowledge that profitability is going to be potentially lower for the next couple of years, but that's fine. We're going to invest in our business to allow us to keep the same sort of approach towards looking after our customers and clients and the same sort of marketing approach, realizing that we will have a hit towards profitability. And when we look at, you know, some of the most successful businesses over sometimes multi-centuries, particularly, and a lot of these, you know, are European businesses, that's how they've done it. They tend to, and even today, they tend to have very low debt levels, if any debt at all because a lot of them tend to be still family owned you know at least maybe 10 or 20 percent is still owned by the original founding family of that business even some of these really big brands it's the same and they tend to hold a lot of cash you know they tend to hold a huge amount of cash I mean there's been a lot of stories over recent weeks around how much Berkshire Hathaway has accumulated in terms of cash savings that's Warren Buffett's the business that Warren Buffett runs again the same principles you know store that cash until you've got something good good to do with it and it allows them to sort of ride through those economic conditions and that's why we wanted to record the podcast you know this podcast theme because it, it might not be you know in the near term but it's something really to think about as you build your business and as you structure your business how do you build something that's going to weather many storms and be able to last many decades and potentially even centuries and beyond. And sometimes you need to make the difficult decisions. You need to consider divestment and that might come from a couple of avenues, whether it be, you know, eliminating a certain product or service line or getting rid of a business altogether. And this doesn't necessarily need to mean the whole business, but it could just be, you know, an office space or a retail space or somewhere that you operate out of that's not it's not performing well. And this sort of ties into our previous sort of podcast around financial modeling, you know, knowing where your profitability lies knowing where which products service lines areas you know are performing best for you and actually producing the most amount of profits because this will allow you to sort of make these difficult decisions as to where you need to shut down or where you need to sell off and I spoke before about potentially sort of riding through that storm and it sort of feeds into what Mina just spoke about with regards to divestment of potential, you know, service lines, business brands, whatever it might be, is you need to consider the impact on your personal plans. You know, if you have a lot of financial commitments that you need to meet, of course, then you're going to have to find a solution that accommodates that. Whereas if you've got the discretion to say, okay, look, I'm fine personally, I don't necessarily need to take any profits out of the business for the next couple of years. Well, then you've got a little bit more headroom to sort of navigate any potential headwaters. And that's something to consider, you know, not only to plan around a potential slowdown, but also with respect to your own personal financial plans as well. You don't necessarily want to put your business under so much stress that you've got to strip out all the cash and therefore weaken the business so that it can't survive those sorts of situations. So it's something I think to keep in the back of your mind in any case. So in a nutshell, you really need to have a plan. So, you know, in the event that all goes to shit, part of my French, you know, you need to document, even if it's something at the back of your mind, what action plan you'll have, you know, to help you know, keep the business afloat, keep it going, keep your lifestyle unchanged. It's really important to have these sort of difficult discussions, difficult sort of thought processes to ensure that you can weather the storm. And we do live in the lucky country. The lucky country is that we haven't had a recession for more than three decades. And so we can get lured into a sense that, you know, that it's never going to happen. Now, of course, if there's a slowdown, there's plenty of headroom for the RBA to start cutting interest rates. Our government debt's around 35% of GDP which is really low compared to other countries. I think the US is almost 130%. So there's plenty of firepower left for the government to navigate these sorts of situations. So I don't think it's in our immediate future. But again, Jim Collins talks about productive paranoia, which is be paranoid about things that can potentially go wrong in your business, but it's got to be productive, of course. You just don't want to jump at every shadow. And these are the one of the things I think are worthwhile thinking about. And even if it's not the economy slowing down, it could be your particular industry or your particular product or sector, I think it's really good to think about if that happens, how will I navigate it? Okay, that's it from us for this week. Until next week, bye for now.